Hey guys, welcome back. If you saw my video on Tuesday, you saw that I was having a really hard time. It is now Friday, July 24th, and the last day for me to be able to put in my advocacy efforts with Solve MECFS Initiative for the bill HR 7057. The bill is suggesting that we give $60 million towards understanding MECFS and the relationship to COVID-19 survivors. I'm going to include an interview clip here from the interview that Mark Zuckerberg did with Dr. Fauci when he talked about his concern for young people who have had COVID-19 to develop MECFS. Now, MECFS is my primary illness that I was initially diagnosed with in 2016, and I can honestly say for months I have been watching people describe how they're feeling after COVID-19 months and weeks afterwards. I first started developing symptoms of MECFS following a very bad bronchial infection at the end of 2016 in which the bronchial infection cleared and MECFS took over. This wrecked my life. I had to quit my job. I had to quit subbing at my daughter's school. I was essentially bed bound for a couple months and then I had a little bit of a recovery and not understanding the damage that I could do to myself with post-exertional malaise. I ended up traveling and getting sicker and continuing to try to work and getting sicker. You saw what my bad look day looks like on Tuesdays and I'm just feeling really grateful that I am well enough today to go and put some uh, feelers out there to my congressional representatives asking them to sign on to this bill. Now, if you've been around MECFS, you know how devastating it is to the people that it affects. But what you may not know is that this illness has a history of neglect going back 30 years. People don't believe that it exists. People think it's made up in my head or that I'm somehow depressed. The fact that Dr. Fauci is calling this a real concern is blowing the, M the minds of the MECFS community because all we've wanted for years now is recognition that this is real and that it's serious and it's a real concern on behalf of doctors. Unfortunately, doctors don't often know what to do with us as MECFS patients. I was fortunate enough to have a doctor who validated me and said, it's clear you're really sick. It's clear there's something wrong with you, but I can't tell you what it is. And that is the scary part of these COVID-19 long haulers because neither did my rheumatologist, neither did my neurologist, neither did the pulmonologist that did my sleep study. They all didn't know what to do with me. And I'm in Atlanta where Emory exists, where we've got great healthcare institutions. This is a major metropolitan area and we have maybe one doctor that sort of kind of knows what it is. And she's a naturopath doctor that doesn't accept insurance. So this bill is gonna be a huge deal and so is all the attention that Dr. Fauci is putting on for it. So without further ado, I'd like to include that clip here and some links below for how you can help support the fight against MECFS. Thanks. Have a great day. Oh, so far um, about how COVID affects younger people. Um, and, and yeah, maybe, maybe just address that set of issues a, a little bit more as well. I mean, there are countless examples. I'm, I'm glad, thank you for bringing that up, Mark, because, you know, as I've often said, I've been chasing viruses and looking about and, and, and going after outbreaks for decades. I've never seen an infection with this broad range of manifestations from nothing in 20 to 40%, 45%, to getting sick for a few days, to getting knocked out literally at home in bed, feeling horrible with an even post infection syndromes to maybe in the hospital, intensive care and death. If you look at the statistics, like you said, the young people are heavily weighed towards not getting seriously impacted. But be careful when you talk about what do you mean by seriously ill? There are many, many young people who get infected. They get sick. They feel horrible for weeks and weeks. And then one thing they notice, and we're getting a lot more information on this, that even when they clear the virus and they test negative, 
and they don't have any virus, they can feel out of sorts for weeks and weeks, almost similar to a myalgic encephalitis chronic fatigue syndrome thing, where they just don't feel right for weeks and weeks and weeks. So this is not an infection to, to take lightly, even with young people, even with young people. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm gonna put some resource links about MECFS and about COVID-19 long haulers in the description below, as well as some actionable items if you want to work in this fight against MECFS. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.